Welcome to the Writing for Success What's Turn It In Got to Do With It webinar recording. This topic will be useful for ACAP, HSA and NCPS students. This is a recording of the material we cover in the live webinar of this topic. You may want to just watch the video straight through or use the pause button to stop and do the activities. The webinar slides are available at this link. The goals of this video are to help you understand what Turnitin's similarity report is and how to use it to improve your writing by ensuring that all your written material is referenced correctly. First of all, let's check how well you know how to use Turnitin. You may have used it at another institution and so are proficient with it. You may have some idea about its use but need more help. Your knowledge of Turnitin may be a little unclear or you may not know how to use it at all. This video and the live webinar will help you become more skilled in its use to reference correctly. Please pause the video and have a think about how familiar you are with Turnitin. When you're ready, start the video to continue. Let's begin by exploring what Turnitin is. Turnitin is a piece of online software that matches any text it receives, for example your assignment, to a very large database of journal articles, books, magazines, newspapers, websites and so forth. It then identifies any similarities it finds between the received text and its database. Turnitin does not know if your assignment has been referenced correctly or not, only that certain text in the assignment matches its database. Turnitin then generates a similarity report which shows a similarity score in percent and highlights what similar text it has found as well as the primary source of the matching text. You can use the similarity report to correct any written text which is not referenced correctly. Every time you upload a draft or revised draft of your assignment, Turnitin rechecks it and generates a new similarity report. When you submit your assignment to your teacher for final marking, Turnitin generates a final similarity report which you and your teacher will have access to. Now, let's see what you think Turnitin can and can't do. Please pause the video and from the boxes marked A to J, first select those descriptions which you think Turnitin can do, there are five, and then those which you think Turnitin can't do, also five. Don't worry if you don't know all the answers. If you're unsure, then make an educated guess. We'll have a look at the correct answers shortly. When you're ready, start the video to continue. Here you can now see a table showing what Turnitin can and can't do. Please pause the video again and check your answers from the quiz you just did on the previous slide. Again, don't worry if some of the selections you made weren't exactly right. This is a learning process. When you're ready, start the video to continue. OK, let's have a look at how to access your similarity report. Assume you're in your class space and have submitted a draft assignment to turn it in. After a while, you should see something like this. You'll notice that your assignment is shown as draft. You'll also see that Turnitin has examined the assignment and found 45% similarity. Of course, your assignment will have a different score. Remember that this does not indicate plagiarism only that your assignment has text that is similar to the text found in Turnitin's database. As this is a draft submission, your teacher will not mark this assignment. When you submit your assignment for final marking, it will then be marked by your teacher and returned with your teacher's comments, allocated mark and grade. When you do this, your submission will show submitted for grading. To access the similarity report generated by Turnitin, Click on the word similarity with your mouse or with your finger or touch screen stylus if you have a touch screen. You should now see your draft assignment starting with the cover sheet. Yours of course will be a different one to this one. Note that all matches are numbered, are colour coded and have a clickable link that shows Turnitin's primary source material. Matches found on your cover sheet may safely be ignored. Scrolling down takes you to the body of the assignment. Here you can again note that each match is numbered and colour coded and has a primary source link that you can follow. You can get some basic information about your submission by clicking on the information icon here. 
You can also download the similarity report in PDF format by clicking on the printer icon here and selecting download PDF of current view for printing. The PDF file will first show all the matches and at the end you will see the match numbers, their links and the similarity score in percent for each. If more than one match in your assignment has come from one primary source, those matches will have the same number assigned to them as well as the same colour code. Clicking on the match number here in your assignment will bring up the primary source text in a small movable window. In the match overview panel here, you can see how many matches have been found in your assignment from the primary source, 8 in this example. Clicking on the left and right arrows will scroll forwards and backwards through your assignment to each match found. As well as the primary source for the match number, the same text will be present in a number of secondary sources, which can be shown by clicking on the match breakdown arrow here. The reference list will usually contain a large number of matches as students tend to use similar source material when writing assignments focused on a specific topic. Only if the references have been correctly formatted using APA 6th edition guidelines can the match percentage score for the reference list be ignored. Now we'll have a look at how to use a similarity report to review your assignment and fix any identified matches that need correct referencing. There are four basic steps to submitting a better assignment for final marking. First, review the matches noted in Turnitin's similarity report. Next, decide whether you should submit the paper for final marking, meaning that you're happy with your referencing. If not, you will need to rework the paper by fixing missing or incorrect references. Finally, make sure you have applied APA 6th edition referencing rules correctly. Remember that you can submit a draft assignment to turn it in as often as you like before submitting the assignment to your teacher for final marking. We will now look at four common errors that are usually present in student papers and how each of these errors can be corrected. The first error is when a student uses source material but only some of the material is cited correctly while other material is either cited incorrectly or not cited at all. The second error is when a student uses original source material but cites it as a paraphrase. The third error is where a correct citation is provided for paraphrase material you used but the student has stuck very closely to the original wording and structure found in the source. The last error we will look at is where a student has taken material directly from a source and has not provided any citation, making the material appear to be the student's own work. This first match provides a correct reference, but also includes material that is not cited correctly. Can you work out what needs to be done to fix up this common error? Please pause the video and take some notes, and when you're ready, start the video to continue. There are two possible ways in which this error can be fixed. The first way involves putting the material from the source into a direct quote format, words enclosed in quotation marks with author, year and a page number provided for the source material. The second way involves using paraphrasing. Here the source material is reworded to convey the same meaning but in your own words. Note that the structure and original wording both need to be changed. Here the age up to when abuse occurs is put first, the numbers involved are expressed in a different way and the type of abuse is presented at the end of the paraphrase. For a paraphrase, only the author and year are needed. In this second match, the student has provided a reference, but the material used, which is a direct quote, is not cited correctly. Can you work out what needs to be done to fix up this common error? Please pause the video and take some notes, then when you're ready, start the video to continue. Again, there are two possible ways in which this error can be fixed. The first way involves putting the exact material from the source into a direct quote format, words enclosed in quotation marks with author, year and a page number provided for the source material. The second way again involves using paraphrasing. Here the source material is reworded to convey the same meaning but in your own words. As noted in the previous example, the structure and original wording both need to be changed. Note also that the numbers used in the paraphrase have been rounded up so that the exact numbers in the original source are not duplicated. 
In this third match, the student has tried to paraphrase the source material, but he or she has stuck too close to the original wording and structure found in the source. Can you work out what needs to be done to fix up this common error? Please pause the video and take some notes, then when you're ready, start the video to continue. As before, we'll look at two possible ways in which this error can be fixed. The first way involves putting the exact material from the source into a direct quote format, words enclosed in quotation marks, with author, year and a page number provided for the source material. The second way involves using paraphrasing. Here, the source material is reworded to convey the same meaning but in your own words. This example relies heavily on the use of synonyms where words with a similar meaning to the original are used. Again, the structure and original wording both need to be changed. Note that some words like residential, school, church, counselling and private can be kept as they are in common use, although you may choose to use synonyms. In the final example, the student has used source material that has not been referenced at all. This would indicate that these words are the student's own when in fact they come from an original source. Can you work out what needs to be done to fix up this common error? Please pause the video and take some notes and when you're ready start the video to continue. Two possible ways in which this error can be fixed are to cite the original source material formatted as a direct quote. Words enclosed in quotation marks with author, year and a page number provided for the source material. Or to put the information into your own words using paraphrasing. You will again need to convey the same meaning as the original material, but you must change the structure and original wording. Notice that some words like criminal history and checks can be used as it may be difficult to find suitable synonyms. This is a summary of what Turnitin is, what it does and how you can use it to check and correct your draft assignments. We saw the same slide earlier, but it's a good reminder for you to keep in mind. Here are a number of excellent resources that will help you write better assignments, including material on the Student Learning Support website and a number of webinars which specifically target academic writing skills. You can go to the webinar schedule and register for these webinars from this link. Feel free to contact Student Learning Support via phone or email if you have any questions or if you would like to request an individual consultation with an advisor. These links provide specific referencing resources, Turnitin information and information about the Fundamental Values Project at the International Centre for Academic Integrity. We hope that you have found this video useful. Best wishes for your continued success with academic writing and referencing throughout your studies.